thing and 24 hours later, my best friend's here. Just uh, magically appeared, teleported. I'm looking for fresh air, man. I, I heard a tip up here that air is better in Spokane, <laughs> so I got in the truck and I was like, hey, let's go see. I get here and boy, was I disappointed. Yeah, it's definitely not good. It's still very, mm. very bad. Ugh. It says 498. But this guy came in town to party with our favorite gal. Not. Me and this car have some unfinished business. Yeah. That's one way to put it. But she, she ain't getting off the hook that easy. We ain't done. No. We're here to party, guys. Mm -hmm. We're ready. So, that's what he is in town for. Also to hang out. Miss his face. That's what it was. <laughs> you took that one exit on your way to work again? Yeah, I just got lost and just I couldn't find an on ramp or off ramp. I just kept going. <laughs> Next thing I know, I was in Spokane. It's weird how that works. So we are going to be fine tuning this thing. I don't think it really likes our air right now. Yeah, the DA up here is a lot different than where it was tuned. So we'll just need to adjust the air fuel ratio a little bit, but. Um, I'm also going to work on setting up uh, some compensations in the ECU now that I'll be able to finish it and help with a lot of that stuff because we didn't really get time to really finish anything when we were last we were on the dyno. It just you know blew on us and we didn't get time to do that. So today I'm going to focus on just fully dialing this thing in and getting it to run exactly the way it should and hopefully everything goes good. <laughs> No words. Oh, well, hopefully. It's not on the dyno, so we should. No, this is true. We're not on the old heartbreaker, so usually. Yeah. We do pretty good when it's like that. Yeah, it's just gonna spin on the street. Yeah. So it's not gonna load it up as much. That'll be a good time. Well, I'm looking forward to it. We're gonna get the scene started up, make some adjustments. I'll keep you guys tuned and let you come along. Well guys, we are back. Evo got all tuned, and this time it actually held together. We left it at the 36 pound mark. I didn't feel like going any higher. I'd actually like to drive the car and get to enjoy it, since I really haven't got to enjoy it the whole time I've had it. And 36 pounds made 700 Mustang, and we just decided to leave it there, work on the launch control. So that thing is all good to go. We are gonna now jump onto the next car, which is Series Gray. And this one, we're just gonna be doing pump gas on it, guys. As I talked about in that video before, has a GTX 3576. And we are gonna start getting this thing ready. I do need to still bleed the brakes and I need to put the wide band in it. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now. And then we'll be ready to go and start tuning this. You're ready to tune. Yeah, you're you driving do? this time. Come on, what do I gotta drive? Because last time I drove, you Aww. saw what happened. I Ray Charles it over the curb. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like I'm driving, so I'll catch you guys up when we get back. Well, I haven't updated you guys since last night. We did get the car all fully tuned on E85. We did get launch control all set up and working. Um, after doing launch control last night on one of them, it spun pretty bad and I just let out of it because it's on the street. There's no reason really to stay in it. With that, we started hearing a whine. I figured it was a timing belt whine. Maybe I just set it too tight, but we needed to finish our pump gas before Steve here headed out. So we went ahead and just took it easy on it, got the pump gas tuned finished, and right at the end of it, yep, this is what I'm dealing with. You guys can see there's literally oil everywhere on this thing. And we pulled over on the side of the road because I saw a little bit of blue smoke coming up here so I thought maybe we had a, a, a manifold leak and an exhaust leak. But every time I rubbed the car up, then it'd have blue smoke. So I got out to check that and then right when I got out, opened the hood, I got literally sprayed with oil. So I had them turn it off. Obviously we checked the oil. Still had some oil in it. Hopefully, you know, we caught it out obviously in time. I went ahead and put a couple quarts in it to drive it back. And when I was driving it back, the oil light started to flicker, so I went ahead and shut it down, and we just towed it back at that point. So, not really sure what's going on at this point. 
I mean, we have a pretty good idea. We're pretty certain that the oil pump, something had failed. One thing that I didn't show you guys when we were timing the engine, the oil pump gear was tight. I should have went ahead and pulled it off, but I knew we were trying to tune this thing. So I went ahead and rolled it. Personal car, live and learn. Should have went ahead and dressed it then, but this car definitely fights me. Oh. It's fought me. Yeah. It's fought me a little bit, but it seemed like we finally had it under control. And I mean, it was running great. Yeah. And it's it seems like whenever we get things running good, it's something bad happens. It's, it really sucks. So this is uh, this is something that we didn't see coming. No, not at all. So unfortunately, I don't think it's gonna make the race day. I'm gonna try my best. I'll see if I can get an oil pump here fast and get it tore apart and see what's going on in there. But it's questionable. We'll see what happens. Um, see obviously what's going on in there. I do believe that we shut the car down early enough it didn't hurt anything. Um, it's just smarter to shut it down than try to chance it and drive it home and hurt something. So, oil yeah. pressure was still there. When the light flickers though, you're down at what, 3 PSI? Yeah. Not yeah. good. So, nope. Definitely gonna have to check it for shavings, make sure there's no metal shavings in the oil pan, and all, or at least in the filter. I cut the filter open. Yeah. yeah. We'll go through it, we'll get it figured out. For now, I don't really got time for it. I don't have time for personal stuff, really, any time. So we'll have to figure it out, out, see if we can get some time. He's getting ready to head back out of town. Appreciate you. Thanks yep. for coming, buddy. All right, man. It's always, a, it's always an adventure. Oh, well, that's one way to put it. We were out in the middle of nowhere when this happened with no service. We had to walk for like 15 minutes, 20 minutes to get a phone call to his girlfriend to come get us and bring us oil. So it's been an adventure today, definitely. And right when we were finishing, we thought we were done. Yeah, it, it was good. We were ready to go, coming back in, and then all of a sudden, yeah. So had another surprise for us. Keep in mind, guys. I mean, it had it had a noise, so I should have known. Then you can definitely blame it on me. I went ahead and kept driving the car. And the very first part of this is knowing that the oil pump gear was tighter than it should have been. So if you want to blame someone? Blame me. My fault. But in the end, my personal car, my money. Hey, took the risk. But I will take the fault for that. That's 100% me. I haven't even me. showed them that. That's 100% me right there. Well, you guys haven't seen this. Um, there isn't really much of a look left, unfortunately. I'll let you explain. Yeah, well, I was driving the car yesterday and uh, we pulled off into a parking lot because I need to make some adjustments on the map. And I'm not normally driving and tuning, so I had a lot going on. And I pulled off in the lot, shut it off, We've been sitting there for maybe 20 minutes, yeah. messing with the map, doing things, and uh, went to take off and didn't see the curb that was right in front of me. <laughs> so couldn't see it. Well, I went to turn out and the curb was right there and I clipped the curb and hopped over the curb and well, you see what happened, destroyed the lift. So yep. yeah, I felt pretty shitty about that. Um, I'm definitely gonna take care of it and pay for yeah. it because you know I was driving the car, that's how I am. So I'm gonna take care of that. but. Uh, First time in 15 years driving anybody's car that I've ever done that. So I'm feeling, uh, feeling a little shitty right now. Really uh, kicking myself for that. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, it could have been a lot worse. Could have happened really to anyone. I mean, you gotta understand that we're focusing on so many other things to get this car going that sometimes you just forget the obvious, so. Yeah, everybody in the car couldn't see it either. So to be, no. to be fair, we all didn't know it was there either. Nope. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like we were in a normal parking spot. We were just pulled diagonally in them. So, just barely clipped it. No big deal. We'll get another one on there. We'll get this fixed. You know, you'll see in his video, I'll link his channel over to the side. There's a lot more clips on there. He got a lot more footage than I did, which is great. So you guys will have to see that side of it. It shows pretty much everything happen, happening the whole time that he's been here. Um, fortunately, I didn't get to record much. Just focusing on the car, making sure he had everything he needed to do make it as easy as we could and you'll probably see i get a little frustrated in his video but that comes with it you know hey the good news is mm. gray rips yeah gray's all done we even talked about gray yeah it's gray not even did, here right now yeah gray did great yep so series gray is all back together that one is all tuned 100 percent weird it's a subaru you know it's what I we know subarus weren't more reliable i don't know what the, what's going on here why is the subaru yeah. running <laughs> Devo we'll just, leave you yeah. guys to decide that one. They'll be like, oh, it's the builder. Hey, you know, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. All I can tell you is, is uh, we're not the only ones that have issues like this with these cars. I know people personally, so yeah. it's not all us, I promise you. 
And for those of you wondering, it is an OEM brand new oil pump when we rebuilt this motor. If you didn't see that video, so it's not like we use cheap parts. Um, just things fail. I think uh, another side of it, I was talking to a good friend of mine and he said they'll leave the time belt a little bit on the looser side. I definitely have it on the tighter side and coming from Hondas, I've always had a tighter timing belt. He said that can definitely cause that oil pump gear to become more stiff and hurt it. So if you want to blame someone like that, it's probably, it's going to be my fault. It's not the motor or the car's fault. So you know, just have to see when you tear it apart. Yeah, we'll find out what it is. You guys will see for now. That's going to end this video out. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Living life up in the fast lane. Living life up in the fast lane. And I ain't slowing down, I ain't slowing down, I ain't slowing down. Living life up in the fast lane. Pedal to the